Hello and welcome everyone to our Substance live stream. We have a lot to share with you today. Our content will be covering the original keynote material that was planned for Substance Days during GDC. My name is Wes and I'm honored to be able to introduce some of the amazing members of the Substance team throughout the stream today. We are going to kick things off with an introduction from Sebastian, the Vice President of 3D and Immersive. Okay, so hello, Substance team. Welcome to our live stream. Seb, the floor is yours. Can you kick things off with the introduction and community artwork showcase? Sure. Thank you, Wes. Uh, uh, hopefully you can, uh, you can hear me okay. Um, yep, sounds so, good. Awesome. Uh, good to be with you. Um, so uh, is there a way for me to see the slides <laughs> actually? <laughs> I'm not sure how, that's, how that's, that does work, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I wanted to start with saying um, hi everyone, uh, good to see you. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, of course an interesting time, trying times for everyone here. So um, we're at home. And we decided to do we decided to do this uh, this online event so that we, we we can show you all the awesome stuff that we have prepared for you and uh, we keep working on because this is um, even though it's a uh, trying times even though it's uh, uh, we're at home we keep we keep working and uh, we're still passionate as uh, passionate as ever uh, and the team is uh, is very happy to actually today show you all the good stuff that we've been working on uh lately so and that will uh soon that will soon be in, in your in your in your hands so basically um a few things a few words first like uh stay safe stay home uh uh we are all in this together uh, hopefully we can resume uh the good old uh um like in real life events and uh, we can shake hands soon but uh in the meantime uh please stay stay safe and uh um anyway so like I was talking about the team, the team is is, is growing, is uh, has never been as big. The team of dedicated to 3D and AR uh, at, at Adobe, uh, it is growing. It is as passionate as ever. And even though we're at home, we keep we keep talking, we keep working, we keep like producing the cool stuff that we love to to do and to develop. And um, and we will share a bit of that today. Uh, we have more than 200 people that directly involved in that uh, in that division, uh, and we have more people also around that uh, at Adobe Research, uh, in the communication teams, uh, product marketing, legal, etc. All awesome teams that help us like even uh, go further than that. So it's uh, never been a better time uh, for us all as a team uh, and for for the community. Hopefully, to you see that uh, because uh, because uh, there is a lot. Uh, that is uh, that is done uh, right now to to promote, create the next generation of 3D and AR um, tools and services. So um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually very 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 excited. And uh, the team the team is growing. I was I was uh, talking about this, and uh, you've seen lately we've uh, uh, welcomed the me the medium team uh, uh, with us, and you will have Kelly talking. Uh, from uh, from Medium, uh, talking about the uh, present future of uh, of Medium, and uh, we're incredibly excited to have them home. And uh, it's an awesome team, and we hired more people to to join the team. It's incredible uh, to see uh, what they what they are working on right now, and how it will uh, complement what we're doing with uh, Substance already, with Dimension, with Mixamo, with Source, with all the content, everything that we're doing and having in the in the in the the, the package already, right? So um, today we will mostly focus on substance and medium, and uh, and but we also already have a lot, a lot to share. So I cannot wait. So uh, anyway, stay safe, stay home. Incredibly excited to be here. Uh, and now let's uh, let's have fun and, and see see what we've been like looking up uh, in the past month. Can you uh, switch to the um, to the community showcase? Thank you. So uh, so what we wanted to do is start with. A few uh, a few images here, uh, and as usual, I'd like to I'd like to just showcase a few images from the from the community, like this one from Pedro County and Fernando uh, Pequet. Um, uh, I, I I love this. I love to. I mean, we all love to 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 see what the community is coming up with, but it's incredible. And 
refreshing and uh, it's uh, it's a good vibes. Actually, every time I see uh, what the community is producing using the substance tools, the medium tool, dimension, uh, uh, mixamo, uh, everything, and it's. Uh, Actually, we wanted to to share a few of them uh, today. So this one, this one is great. Uh, I love the the vibe. I love the the the, the flushy uh, aspect of some of the materials here. I love the the atmosphere. Uh, it's uh, uh, puts a smile on my face. Anyway, so uh, next one, please. Uh, this one also is very 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 cool. Uh, and uh, 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 like I like the I like the the gaze and uh, the gaze. Uh, Towards the future, it might <laughs> might remember everybody that we need to to have like wear masks and and stay inside and closed maybe, but yeah, there is a there is a path forward and uh, and something beautiful to to look at and there's a light at the end of the tunnel maybe uh, hopefully and and I'm pretty sure actually. So this is beautiful piece here again, not trying to be a, a realistic but uh, beautiful. This one also full of uh, full of hope, remembering uh, we were we we're all been kids uh, and with big dreams. And so um, that's uh, pretty much a theme in everything I've been sharing in the past uh, years, if, if you've been following us. Uh, and uh, I, I, try, I always try to, to have these, these images and memories of uh, uh, being a kid dreaming and, and, and trying to come up with uh, cool stuff. And this is what you're doing here, and really. And uh, Thomas Sackman here came up with something very, very cool. I love this, I love this image uh, here. Uh, this one is one of my favorite, and uh, Borislav uh, Kishashki is uh, one of the best uh, 3D artists out there. And I strongly invite you to, to look at everything he's doing, all these characters, all these um, uh, like monsters, <laughs> if, we, if we may say. They all look awesome. I love this one. Um, it's a beautiful piece as well. Uh, I love the donuts, and uh, I love donuts lovers. And uh, so I, I think it's, <laughs> it's a good loop here. Next one. Speaking of dragons, a uh, very, very different one, um, but uh, this one I love also the atmosphere and uh, the vibe overall and the lighting is beautiful, not only the texturing obviously, but the lighting, the shapes. Um, I love the, how, how the wings look so uh, thin and transparent and, 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 and light. And I, uh, it's, it's very delicate work, uh, very different in, in style from the previous one obviously, but uh, I love this one as well. And we switch, yeah. And speaking of art, actually, this piece is incredible. I don't know if you've seen this one, but it's all 3D. And uh, the intent here was obviously to, to come up with something that looks like an, uh, um, a painting and the effect is great. So not only is it like a, a question of, uh, of uh, texturing and modeling and everything that is done very, very well, but also like the whole atmosphere, the whole vibe, the lighting, obviously, the fabrics, uh, the gaze, the looks, the, the people talking in the back, uh, the people thinking in the ride, uh, the look of uh, the uh, the bride, etc. It's it's it tells a billion stories, and that's that's what we want to see in an image, right? And it's it's what was awesome uh, uh, with all these uh, these paintings, and this is what uh, Chen has been uh, conveying here. So a great great piece as well. So yeah, a beautiful one. Um, yeah, different type of art, and uh, this this I love as well. Uh, very different in style, uh, beautifully uh, laid out, uh, and um, uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, result and materials, and I, uh, very delicate details I love uh, in this image. Uh, next one. Yeah, so lately we've seen also more and more uh, uh, characters in real, uh, Hyper realistic characters being uh, done with uh, substance, and uh, this one from uh, uh, Natalie uh, Young, Natalie Portman, uh, uh, was uh, was beautiful. And the next the next ones uh, also are are incredible. And Hedy Kirimi is maybe one of the, the best artists uh, out there, three <laughs> D artists out there. And if you haven't seen what he's been doing, I strongly invite you to, to check on his art station page and website. He's been producing all these, yeah, these uh, uh, portraits of um, of uh, 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 artists and and stars and uh, uh, Freddie Mercury here uh, uh, and Drake and the, the quality is incredible. The hyper realism that uh, he's been able to to obtain is is absolutely incredible. Also the atmosphere, not only the uh, the, the the pure quality of the the, the textures, materials, rendering. Uh, but also lighting and staging here is is, is beautiful and the, the gaze the the, the look uh, of Dre here is like it's it's to me it looks like a, almost a 
almost a photograph and it's beautiful and strongly invite you to, to, to check on his work. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, good old um, warrior. We love, uh, we all love a good, a good warrior uh, sometime to time. So beautiful work here from Andre Nadal. Um, uh, and the next one is actually a warrior as well, but uh, um, a different style. And also one thing that we've noticed uh, in the past years now, and uh, it's less of a, uh, of a novelty, but uh, really uh, it's good to see uh, a non-photo realistic, like more stylized type of uh, artworks. And this one is a great example, uh, same theme, a warrior in an armor, uh, but very different atmosphere, very different vibe, very different materials, obviously, and still like conveying something uh, unique and, and, and powerful. And Olivier uh, Couston is really, one of, again, like a super strong artist. I, I keep seeing all, uh, beautiful artists everywhere, but like, yeah, yeah we, we did a selection of, uh, of some of them, some of the best here. And so this is, this is great to see. Um, yeah, speaking of uh, non-photorealistic, stylized uh, tip type of art, I like this one, Jade from Jade Dong, and uh, beautiful, again, beautiful uh, scenery, everything very uh, uh, colorful and joyful, and uh, uh, we love we love this uh, this type of uh, this type of art. Um, one environment, same Guillaume uh, Guillaume Hecht, uh, beautiful environment, not photorealistic in between, I would say. Uh, but also, like uh, there is, there are so many good things about the um, environment, uh, environmental art, and uh, I've been I've been showing less so, uh, uh, less of them uh, lately. But uh, uh, there are plenty of examples, and this this is a good one. Uh, so this one I love, very uh, Zelda-ish, uh, and um, uh, yeah, I love I love the, the vibe here again, and uh, knowing that uh, the tools can be used to produce the Drake, uh, as well as um, uh, this type of art is actually very uh, fulfilling. And I will end up with a few examples of uh, uh, substance designer based uh, 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 spheres. And this one is uh, <laughs> very cool, uh, uh, and photorealistic as well, very stylized, beautifully done, uh, incredible in details. I love that. I love that. And the next ones are, are around the same idea. This, <laughs> this if you haven't seen this, uh, this is uh, insane. And we have the insanity award to, to, <laughs> to, to, to deal with this. Uh, but this is, this, is, uh, this is only a texture. And uh, you see it on the sphere here and you see it like laid uh, on, on the plane in, in the background. And it's only uh, built on top of like using uh, displacement mapping. And you can obtain this type of result with uh, only one graph in Substance Designer, which is which is incredible. The, the the fine line between like modeling and texturing is getting finer, and uh, some people like just cross it and 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 go crazy and go creative with it. So the next one is um, not directly a, a Substance Designer, but there is a sphere, and I wanted to end with this one because I'm an Acura fan. Uh, I grew up on on this on this uh, on this guy, and I I was so happy to to see that like uh, produced with. Uh, Substance as well, so uh, substance designer mostly here, um, but uh, uh, with a bit of uh, uh, layout uh, at the end. So anyway, so that's uh, that's uh, that concludes uh, my th th my part. Um, again, super happy to be here. Uh, wait for for the next uh, uh, things. You will be hopefully blown away, and I think you will be blown away because I've been blown away myself. Like just following the, what the guys have been producing. This is this is awesome. This is really really deep, uh, rich. And uh, it shows that we're, we're as passionate as ever. Um, we are working on the thing and we are um, like, we can't wait to, 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 to give you all what we've been producing and see what you guys produce with them. But uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really um, uh, cool. Anyway, thank you guys. Stay safe, stay home and up to you, I guess, uh, Jeremy. Or Wes maybe. Have we lost Wes? We may have lost Wes. <laughs> Construction work. Somebody cut the, the Ethernet cable, I guess. I think I think Wes is muted. Okay, time for me to play with my background. Right? What about this guy?
how I did here. Okay, let's go back to my actual button. Let's just check. Uh, how is, yeah, let's see if I can unmute Wes. This is from my son, obviously, stealing my computer to do the, uh, the, yeah, the, the zooms at home, right? That's cool. Is it going to work, Jeremy? It should. I'm trying to understand why. I see you doing some stuff on the, <laughs> on the YouTube thing. Careful. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we can show you the cool stuff we have. <laughs> We've Sorry been guys. Like some technical difficulty. Hello? There we go. Hey. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So awesome. Fun to do live stream stuff. <laughs> Something always <laughs> fun happens, huh? All right. Of course. Okay. So we're back. We're back on schedule. So Seb, thank you very much for your intro. Thank you. And uh, yes, and also to all of the wonderful artwork that you showed everyone from the community. It's, it's, it's truly inspiring for all of us to see what you produce. Uh, very humbling. And uh, also, like I said, inspiring for us to, to look at more ways we can help you create. So uh, yeah, getting started next. Uh, Jeremy, you're up. So we are going to uh, introduce Jeremy. So uh, Jeremy is our principal product manager for entertainment. And uh, Jeremy, we're going to let you take it away. Thank you, Wes. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome. And uh, I'll be talking about the, the product updates uh, that we're going to have in the next few months. And uh, I'll start with Substance Painter. We'll have, we'll have a lot of stuff to cover today. So hopefully, we'll be able to fit that in time we have. But let's start with Substance Painter. So uh, Substance Painter, we have a new uh, new release coming up this month, and uh, we have a few few interesting things. Uh, first, we celebrated last month our 50 million sessions uh, since the release of Substance, the initial release of Substance Painter in October 2014. Um, people have been launching the tool 50 million times, which is pretty amazing. Uh, so thank you, thank you again for for um, using the tool, for helping us make it what it is today, and for for being part of that, that great 3D community around around Substance. So uh, what's next in Substance Painter? So we introduced automatic UVs in Substance Painter um, a few months ago, and since then we have about forty thousand people. Um, creating automatic UVs and saving time by creating these automatic UVs in Substance, in Substance Painter. And uh, we also got tons of feedback uh, uh, based on that, on that first beta release. Uh, and based on that feedback, the new uh, release of Substance Painter, it's used a few new options that you can play with when, you, when dealing with UVs. Um, you can actually recompute existing UVs. So if you have a mesh with UVs, you don't like them, you want to recompute them, you can do that. Um, you can only regenerate the missing ones if you want to. Um, and also, if you already laid out your UVs, uh, you just want to pack them, you can do that. Um, or um, if you just uh, cut your seams only in your UVs, but you didn't unwrap them, didn't pack them, you can also choose to only, only do these parts. So uh, you'll just have more flexibility in this release. And um, the, the, the team working on the automatic UVs is working hard on new method to uh, unwrap and pack UVs to uh, have much more efficient UVs. So we'll have more news um, again later this year because um, we're really working hard on this. Um, also, we revamped our texture export. So um, it's, been, it's been a consistent feedback that we've had the past few years is um, the export process was a little too rigid and it was hard to kind of customize it as much as you wanted. Um, so we rebuilt from scratch the exporter, uh, allowed us to also um, Kind of fix some bugs, make it faster, uh, have more um, 
uh, scripting capabilities with it. But um, what we added is ways to override a lot of things to make sure that we can you can customize it the way you want. So uh, typically, you can you can customize the uh, the format. Uh, the file format and the B depth of each texture separately, each texture set. So that's when if you want your height to be an EXR, an EXR, where the other ones are other other formats, you can do that. It's very useful. Uh, you can override pretty much anything, um, and you can do these overrides on all the texture sets at once. So uh, you don't have to go through all each texture set and modify the settings. You can actually do kind of a bulk modification, which is which is really cool. Uh, you also get better feedback when you export to tell you which maps are going to be exported and and where. Um, and there's more to come since we build this from the ground up. Um, now we have a solid base to add more options to the to um, to the export, like multi-selection of texture sets, um, incremental export, where for example, it would only export automatically whatever has changed. So if you have like tons of texture sets, you only change a few things here and there, you can um, painter would know what to export and where, so you don't have to actually deal with that. So lots of exciting stuff. Um, we also worked on uh, mesh export. Uh, since we introduced an origami, we got a lot of feedback on um, how do I export my mesh once I've actually created the UVs for this mesh. And uh, we had a few issues uh, with mesh export. It was fairly basic. So um, now we worked on this, and you can now export FBX files from Substance Painter after you uh, process your UVs. And we will keep quads and end gons uh, from your original mesh. So we don't. Uh, triangulate. You can triangulate it if you want, but you have the option to not do that if you want to have your in, your mesh intact, uh, the same way that you imported it. And we also uh, respect the hierarchy and, and naming um, um, and naming inside of your file. So basically, the mesh you bring in is going to be the same mesh uh, comes out of Substance Painter. Uh, talking about mesh exports, um, we added a cool little option that allows you to um, export your mesh pre tessellated and pre displaced. So, if you uh, create something in Substance Painter with tessellation, with displacement, um, you want to export it as is. You can actually export the very high poly mesh with the displacement and the tessellation. And that's super useful, for example, for 3D printing. And in this case, we see on the slide is the, the painter version on the left, and on the right, it's actually a real life uh, 3D printed version of the shoe. Um, another example here uh, with Pablo Mio Gomez um, zombie that he had done for the substance source uh, a zombie skin drop, where uh, we have our, our zombie and painter on the, on the left, and then a nice little um, 3D version of it, real life version of it on the right. So next up is the bakers. So um, the last phase of Substance Designer, we introduced some improvement to the bakers, and those improvements are making their way to Substance Painter in this release. The main improvement is the curvature. Um, until now, the curvature process was a mix of um, baking from the low poly mesh, getting information from the normal map, and kind of mixing all that together. And the results you see on the left here um, were good, but um, lacked precision. And there was some artifacts. Uh, there was some issues with the seams. Um, the new curvature baker that replaces the older one is uh, ray traced. And uh, the result, as you can see here, is much smoother, much more precise. Um, you're never going to get like edges that are too bright or too dark, like it was the case with the, with the, with the previous baker. And also, it's at RTX accelerated, so it's much, much faster than uh, the previous curvature baker. Another baking improvement is the AO Baker. Um, there are two, two main things. Uh, we added an option to have a ground plane. So as you can see here on the right, we have the ground plane activated. And it'll help you uh, kind of ground your character your object on the floor. That's super useful uh, when baking for, for uh, more stylized artworks. And also, we changed just the default settings of the AO so that by default, if you just bake without changing any settings, the AO looks much better than it did than it did before with much smoother gradients and, and things like that. So uh, overall, just just nice improvement to the baking. Uh, next up is the scripting API. So um, I, I've lost count of how many customers' meetings I went to where I would see the tech artist face go through like a roller coaster in motion where we would say, yeah, there is like there is scripting in, in, um, in Substance Painter. And yeah, it's, it's JavaScript. And people's faces would just melt. Uh, so we're happy to announce that going forward, the scripting API for Painter will use uh, Python 3.7. So this first release will have that first, first part of that API. Um, the JavaScript API will remain. So if you have script working on the JavaScript API, it will still work. Uh, we just, we'll just won't add new features. And now from now on, we'll add new features through uh, the Python API, which should be um, much easier to create plugins with much more capabilities than the JavaScript API was. 
Uh, something else we added is a uh, decal tool. So um, uh, last few, I think last year, sometime last year, we introduced some new projection modes for the fill layers. And one of these projections was the planar projection. Uh, but if you just wanted to have like a small little decal on one part of your object, um, using the planar projection was not uh, super practical. You had to create a fill layer and then modify a few settings. Um, now what you can do is you can drag and drop an asset with Alt on your ass on your on your mesh, and uh, that will just create a little projection, a little local projection you can you can use uh, directly on your mesh. And here we are uh, showing some some decal material from Substance Source. That I'll be talking a bit a bit about uh, later on. Uh, just tweaking a little bit the decals here, placing them around, and I can just grab um, I can just grab another of these decal material drag and drop it on my mesh and again just place it wherever I want. So it's just a it's just a very kind of quick shortcut to um to add this uh to add these decals. Hey Jeremy, I gotta say man, that is pure awesome. <laughs> Thank that you. is really cool. Uh, props to the, the source team. Like that you'll I'll talk a bit a little bit about this later, but they've they've built a library of, of procedural decals that are amazing to to place on any kind of object. Uh, and finally, UDIM. So um, I'm not going to announce a UDIM release today. Uh, I'm just going to say we're working very hard on it. Uh, we have a beta going on. Uh, beta testers are crunching on the beta, trying to break it as much as they can. Uh, sometimes they real, sometimes they manage to. So we're still fixing a few bugs, uh, improving performance. But UDIMs are coming, and uh, they're coming soon. We'll, be, we'll hope to be able to 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 share with you a build uh, very very soon. Um, that's it for uh, what's coming up next for Substance Painter. Uh, one last, one last uh, thing related to Substance Painter. Um, you may have seen this somewhere around uh, on the social media. Uh, we have a nice partnership with Wacom. Um, if you get, if you buy one of the new Cintiq uh, 16 or 22 inches, you actually get six months of Substance for free. So that's like $120 uh, savings. So these are pretty cool. Uh, I have one, and, and they work very well with Substance Painter. Um, so that was our short commercial break. Now uh, let's talk a bit about about that dear uh, Matt. So um, as you may be aware, we had a new Meet Matt contest uh, this year, and um, we were focused on on displacement. Um, so our vision, I guess, and, and Seb Sebastian's vision for material, as we talked a little bit earlier, is that it shouldn't be limited to two dimension. A lot of work that that would require advanced polygon modeling skills uh, is actually very easy to do and really fun to do when um, you you include it into your material work and do some kind of like more than texturing you do shaping and you kind of you kind of bring shapes into the texturing and bring some 3D element to it. Uh, and I think the reception of this of this contest, the results we got, kind of validates validates that vision. Uh, the quality of the entries was was incredible. Uh, like every day. We'll be on Slack, um, uh, posting submissions we've seen on, on our station, um, and everybody will have their mind blown by what people were doing with Substance Painter with just that single, that single mesh with so many different variations. So, uh, congratulations again to all of you who participated. Uh, it was it was a real pleasure for everybody. I think I'm talking, talking for everybody. Uh, the pleasure was to see the creativity uh, of the community. Um, so we had uh, more than 1,200 subscription uh, submissions. Uh, there's tons of mats on our station on Sketchfab um, and uh, a lot and lots of displaced vertices. So I'll just, we announced the winners. Uh, we were supposed to announce the winners during the keynote GDC. Uh, since the keynote was kind of uh, pushed back a little bit, we announced the winners last week. Just going to go quickly through, uh, through those winners again. Um, on the student category, uh, really, really impressive, uh, impressive submission from uh, Nikolai, uh, Francesca, and, and Florian. Uh, with really good use of uh, displacements um, and all the different features of, of Substance Painter. Uh, some of the runner-up, uh, again, again, really diverse um, kind of ideas around around mats um, and really, really cool, pretty cool entries. Um, and then the, the the school winner. Uh, so we had a, a category for school this year, since a lot of students, uh, since a lot of students uh, participated and. Um, and Objective 3D in Montpellier, France, had uh, three of their uh, three of the students placed uh, very high in the in the jury ranking, so they won the school competition. And then the main, like the general general competition winners, uh, William, Adam, and, and Ayagor, 
uh, uh, entries were amazing. Uh, we were like wondering how do they even do that with just painting this placement of substance painter. It's it's crazy that the the penguin and the the the, the monkey are just are just completely incredible. And again, some uh, some runners up here with all kind of 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 cool ideas uh, from just like the the chocolate to different robots and the 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 Roman soldier. Um, all all very very cool entries. Um, and actually, we had one entry that didn't make it to the top ten by the jury, but uh, we really felt like it needed some kind of shout out because. Um, not only, so Guillermo not only delivered a, a very good entry, a very good material definition, but um, it told a story through his texture work and through a little animated short film that it, that it made. Uh, I just, we wanted to highlight his work and, and congratulate him again on, on, the, on the creativity. So uh, Wes, I think you have a, a video. Uh, yeah, let's roll that now. All right. Wow, that was incredible. That was just, that was really, really cool. Cool, yeah, congratulations again to, to all of you who entered the contest. Uh, it was amazing. And I know we only highlighted the, the, the top 10 uh, for each categories, but there are hundreds and hundreds of, of, um, of entries that are, that are amazing. And I hope we'll be able to showcase them in, in some formula there at some point. Yes, definitely. So many wonderful entries. All right, thank you so much, Jeremy. So next up, uh, we are going to introduce Kelly. So Kelly, this is oh, we still have, uh, this... we still have substance designer first. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's go back and hit that then. Sorry guys, jump the jump the gun a little bit. Okay, sorry, Jeremy, Kelly, take it away with designer. <laughs> didn't, didn't mean to steal your thunder, Kelly. I'm just yeah. I just have a little bit a, little, a little few things to say first. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, I was <laughs> yeah, well, I was so excited to hear from Kelly. I know, and I know. We're all so excited. The team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so substance designer first, and we'll talk about medium after. Uh, so substance designer. Uh, so we have a new release coming up as well. Uh, it's actually coming up tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, and at least this sometime this week. Um, and so one feature that we added is uh, something that people have been asking for a long time: be able to map just simple action to shortcuts. And now that's possible through a new shortcut manager, where you can create custom shortcuts for all your nodes. Um, they can be the node that come with Substance Designer, but also all your custom nodes, your favorite nodes. Uh, you can assign shortcuts to them, so you can very quickly build your graph without having to to go through uh, the library every time you, you want those nodes. So super useful. Uh, another thing we 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 modified is the material property, the shader properties. So until now, the, the shader properties, if you were in, in um, iRay and if you were in OpenGL, were a little different. Um, it was kind of hard to to follow between the two, and the UI was a little different. So we kind of um, harmonized that; they look the same, and um, they're basically linked between the two renderers. And we also added some some cool little features like the ability you can see some checkbox in there, the ability to turn on and off channels very easily. To you. if you want to just see your albedo, if you just want to see your normal map, you can just super quickly just turn on and off these channels without having to like unplug stuff in your graph or do any kind of, of weird um, of weird setup. Um, Color management improvements. So uh, in the last piece of Substance Designer, we added um, Open Color IO to be able to uh, do some pretty advanced color management. Um, for this release, we're adding the Adobe's Color Engine that was to support ICC profiles, so you get the exact same colors um, between Photoshop, another tool that support uh, ICC profiles, and Substance Designer. And another thing that we added is also now by default in the 3D view, you can actually switch to um, the AC Stone Mapper. And AC Stone Mapper is a very 
kind of um, broadly used uh, tone mapping that's used um, with a lot of films and, and, and movies, but as well in Unreal Engine, Unity, for example. So you can activate that in your viewport by default so that the results you see in the viewport will be very, very close to what you would see uh, in Game Engine with the tone mapper. Um, also improved baking quality. So Substance Designer is always where we introduce the new baking features and improvements, and then they roll over to Substance Painter, uh, usually the reason after that. Um, so one thing that we're adding to Substance Designer is that we improve the ray distribution of the baking. And you can see kind of the old, um, the old ray distribution at the top row, and then the bottom row is the same amount of samples with the new ray distribution. So you can see that with the same amount of samples, we get a quality, a quality that's much, much higher. That means you can get faster bakes by using fewer samples. Um, and again, just with the RTX accelerated AO plus this, uh, your bakes get takes basically a couple of seconds to bake high quality AO maps. Um, so we can have a new resource substance designer without new nodes. And uh, we have a few new nodes to show you here. So we have a new uh, FXAA nodes. I don't know if you've ever tried to um, get some of these like um, black and white or the grayscale maps that have very sharp edges in substance designer and try to smooth those edges. You would use blurs, but it doesn't really work right. Um, now you have an actual anti-lazing nodes inside of substance designer to smooth out all these shapes and have very, very nice um, borders on the, on the sharp edges. Another node that we are reintroducing is uh, the PBR render node. So we introduced the PBR render nodes, uh, I think a year ago or so, um, and uh, our, our resident designer wizard, uh, Nicholas Werman, is, it, had, had built it, and um, he thought he could build something better. And so he went back to work on it. And what this is, is basically, a full pass tracer inside of a substance node, uh, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, so you can bring in all your channels as input, and it will just create a, a, a ray trace render of your of your material. Um, you can do that on the sphere, on the plane, on the cylinder, and there's tons of effects you can add to it. Uh, you can have a custom IBL in background. You have self shadowing. You can have tone mapping. You can do turntables. Uh, you have bucket depth of field. You have bloom, lens flare, and all kind of cool, uh, cool settings that you can play with to create amazing renders of your material. So I have a few examples to show you. Um, the first three here. So they're basically just screenshot of the 2D view. They're not 3D view. It's just like the, the, the result of the 2D view here. And so on the left side, we can see some um, anisotropy and clear coats on that carbon fiber. Uh, the middle render, if you look closely, you can see there is some emissive um, and that emissive is actually not baked in. We have emissive on the glass, and that emissive is actually generating lights that will illuminate the wood on the side. So it's it's actually GI from from the emissive map, which is fairly amazing. Um, and on the right side, you can see some very high quality displacement, uh, nice self shadowing, um, and it's not limited to to just those shapes. Uh, you can create very high quality renders of your materials on the plane. And here we have an amazing displaced plane uh, with book depth of fields. And again, it's just a 2D view. It's a 1K by 2K texture, basically, that we generated, um, which is that which has that render. Uh, and another one here. Um, so the, the filters come with some presets. So you can already create very nice renders straight out of the box. Um, and it basically, you can create very like amazing render that would, that would kind of let you avoid the additional step of setting up a custom scene in a third party renderer to bring in your materials, map per map, set up the displacement right, set up the lighting right. You can just have that in one node inside of your graph. So it's, it's really, really amazing. Uh, so again, congratulations to uh, Nicholas, who's always amazes us uh, with, his, with his crazy uh, substance designer skills. Um, I do not, I do not uh, encourage you to go look at the graph though. Because uh, I don't know if I don't know if your computer can handle it, uh, or if your brain can handle it, but uh, it, it's really amazing. <laughs> yeah, we should all take a moment just to say thank you to Nick Wisman. <laughs> he is a he is an absolute wizard, man. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I, I don't know what he's going to come up with next. It's, it's yeah, just amazing. Uh, next up is uh, custom shader graphs. So that's something that we talked about a few times already. Um, I think we introduced it first at, at CGraph last year. Um, and it was the idea of um, creating Material X graphs instead of Substance Designer. So for those of you who are not familiar with Material X, with Material X 
It's a material definition standard that originated at um, ILM and Lucasfilm. And um, the goal is to be able to represent materials in the render agnostic ways. And what that means is that you would set up your shader once, and that shader can work in any tool anywhere. Um, and we're getting closer. We're getting closer to that goal. Um, so instead of just building native support for Material X in Substance Designer, what we built is a plugin system that allows you to, to create custom shader graphs. So you can create custom graphs for whatever shader system you want. Turns out we did Material X first, uh, but you could create you could create your own if you wanted to. It's it's basically a plugin um, that is that is open source. Um, so what it does is it it, it we use um, our MDL graph to build shaders and that MDL is automatically converted into GLSL and other formats if need be. So if you've ever built materials in Unreal Engine, uh, that would look very familiar. It's it's exactly the same process. Uh, we have our shader graph here in the middle. What we have are different channels, our texture coordinates. Uh, and for these materials, I had the PBR material, and then I added um, some uh, micro dirt on top using a world space normal map. Uh, and then I added some micro scratches that I can um, paint with a mask uh, in different areas of the mesh. Um, and so I'm building this in Substance Designer. I can preview the results in real time in IRA and in the OpenGL view. And uh, when I'm happy with it, I can just press the export to painter button. And what it does is it creates for me a the same shader for Substance Painter. And I have my dirt parameters and my scratches parameters only here. So I get the exact same rendering in uh, Designer and in Painter. And uh, that same shader graph that I was building in Designer, I can also export it to OSL. And that means I can use the same shader in 3ds Max and Maya and all these other uh, all these other tools. And I can render the same material in Arnold, for example. So you can build that shader in Substance Designer and use that shader across the whole pipeline up to the final rendering of the final game, which is pretty amazing. In this case here, if you kind of zoom in, I hope with the compression of the stream, you'll be able to see it. Uh, but we have some these like very small speckles and very, very tiny little scratches here uh, that could only be done through uh, shader work and not through um, through uh, textures because that's, that's very, very high resolution. I can actually zoom in even more and see each little uh, grain of, of, of dirt on there. Um, so the Material X plugin will be available at the same time as the uh, Substance Designer release on Substance Share. Uh, you'll be able to download it. And uh, it's, it's a beta for now, but we'll be updating it uh, uh, in the coming months. And uh, we, can't, we can't wait to hear your, your feedback on it. We're very excited about it. Uh, next up is Alchemist. Um, so on Alchemist, uh, we've been working also on uh, just improving, improving the overall workflow. And one of the things we added is export presets. Um, so you can now, you, Alchemist is, is now shipped. The current version of Alchemist is now shipped with those export presets uh, for different renderers and engines. And that will do all your texture packing and everything correctly. Uh, the cool thing is that those presets are basically just substance graphs. Uh, so you can actually create your own preset very easily by just creating your own substance graph with inputs and outputs. Um, save that in the, in the um, Alchemist folder and it will be added to your, uh, to your preset library. Um, so now something very exciting. I'm super excited about this one. Um, so this is really, really exciting. Um, so Alchemist is kind of a test bed application to try machine learning workflows. Um, and uh, we've, we've shown the delighter before. And so today we have a new, a, a new reveal, um, which is our AI powered image to material. So I'm sure you've all heard or, or used bitmap to material. Um, and some of you may still be using it. Uh, it was a simple kind of effect, but still effective tool to transform a simple image into a full material. So what I'll show today is kind of the next generation of um, going from an image to a material. Um, and where bitmap to material would simply just look at the luminosity of the image, and we would do some clever tricks behind the scene in substance to um, try to approximate what the material would look like based on this grayscale information, uh, it was still pretty uh, an approximation. Um, so this new process, what it does, it uses machine learning to truly recognize shapes and objects in the image and generate an accurate height map and normal map. And also does the, the delighting for you. Um, so it's, it's, it's really amazing to look at. So that's going to be our demo today. So I'm going to switch to uh, Alchemist. Here we go. 
Uh, and in Alchemist, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I have a couple of images here. I'm going to go in with this one, and and we want to transform that into a material. Um, so I don't know if you if you try to transform that kind of image to material with bitmap to material or any other image to material tool out there, uh, but you're likely going to get results that you're not expecting, mainly because each of these stone has a different color and different grayscale value. Some of them are brighter than the grout, some of them are darker, and uh, it will end up being kind of a mess. So if I... Hey, Jeremy, uh, yeah? I'm sorry to interrupt you, man, but I, I, are you showing your Alchemist screen? Is Yes. Because we're just seeing the PowerPoint slide right now. Oh, that is not right. Let me stop sharing my screen and share it again. Oh, I know why. I was sharing the PowerPoint app instead of the screen. So there we go. Now I should be seeing Alchemist. Seb, I like the standing, man, getting some exercise in. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Can you see Alchemist? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. we got and it now. It. All right. Perfect. Sorry, Jeremy. Yeah. There stay we go. in shape. Stay in shape all the time. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Stay in shape, man. Good job. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm an alchemist. I have this, this image here. Uh, so, so yeah, typically something that would not work right with bitmap material, other tools, because all of these tones all have different colors. And uh, since these, these, most of these tools are grayscale based, um, um, this stone is darker. So we'll think it will be lower than the grout, which it is not. This one is brighter. We'll think it's higher. The result is usually not not what you'd expect. So, if I drag and drop this here and apply my bitmap to material in there, uh, what we'll see is something like this, which is not what we would want from this. This this is not what it should look like. Um, and we can tweak bitmap to material all we want. Uh, we're never going to get a result that that is uh, really satisfying. So uh, now comes uh, our new process, which is codename materia, but that that will uh, not be the final name. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, uh, I can actually look at the normal map here. That's the normal map we have, which is not very accurate. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply Materia. And uh, it will process for a little bit, and we're going to be able to see the result very quick. Materia is a pretty cool name, though, man. I know. Yeah. This is the result. So now we get something that is just amazingly detailed. Uh, we have the stones and all boom. the same height. The normal map is super clean. <laughs> Um, and that, I mean, you would get a result that would be very close with photogrammetry out of out of that that scene. Um, and in fact, matter of fact, the the way we 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 train that material algorithm is by feeding it tons of photogrammetry data so that it can uh, it can see what is the ground truth of uh, the height map and the normal map versus a rendering of it. And by uh, analyzing tons and tons of these, it can actually and regenerate that, that photogrammetry process just from a single image because it, it, it figures out uh, what the height should be. And we get that amazing, amazing result here. Um, so it works great on, on all kinds of all, all kinds of materials. And as you've seen, I've, I haven't even touched any slider. I can fine tune things if I want to, but most of the time, right out of the gate, I'll, I'll give you amazing results. Uh, if I go back to my PowerPoint here, I have a few um, I have a few examples. I kind of go from like simple to, to harder. Uh, this one I would I would call a simple example just because bitmap material will give you an okay result with this. Uh, but still, you got some some grout that is white, some grout that is black. Uh, stones are different colors, so uh, it would be very hard to get that kind of sharp result uh, with any other tool than than um, that you mesh to material. But there are examples here, which is a little harder because this one has the initial the original photo has direct lighting from the sun, so we get drop shadows from the bricks onto the grout, which would throw off any kind of, of, of image processing tool. Um, and here, we managed to remove most of the shadowing. And uh, we get a super clean height map and normal map. And we get a nice, nice uh, result here on the sphere. Um, this one is pretty hard um, because the photo has huge uh, normal dense, very sharp, uh, very strong shadowing. Uh, and this typically, like you give that to bitmap to material, it's going to give you a bloody mess. Uh, and pretty much any other tool in the market uh, is going to try to convert that into a, a material. Here we can remove entirely the shadowing. You can see on this part, uh, the normal light looks great, and the height at all these sharp edges, and we get that those very really sharp looks on our final on our final material. And this is like if like the worst example you could find. It's like the worst condition to take a picture and try to convert it into a material. Uh, a few other examples here. As well, some some bricks with uh, some kind of uh, poured concrete in between. Also, very hard to convert into a height map. This does it perfectly. We get this nice kind of round pour 
uh, in between in between the bricks here, um, and the, the the mortar here it looks looks great. Uh, final final um, final result here. This is again something that would fail entirely on other on other methods because we have uh, cracks that are dark, we have the dirt that is very light, and then the grass is dark too. Um, so that would that would that would not work unless we're using some AI to figure out that this is actually raised compared to uh, compared to the dirt. And here we got a nice result where the grass is actually raised up. We get these nice cracks and everything. Jeremy, this is amazing. Grass is so hard to capture. I know it, it is. It is very hard. And this is <laughs> like a with a one single click. photo. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I mean, it's amazing. We can't wait to, to have you guys try it. Um, that will be part of the next uh, Alchemist release that will come sometime sometime in the next couple of months. Um, I'm just excited to, to share with you the first results. Uh, obviously, it's an AI-based process, so always we can always improve it. So we expect it to be even better when we release it. So, so Jeremy, you mentioned now this is an AI-based process, but I, my question is, like, how much Nicholas magic did we have to conjure for this as well? <laughs> This is actually this is actually not Nicholas magic. Uh, I'm sure if 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 we if we put him in a room without any that's windows I mean. for you know, six just, months, he could probably come up with the same thing. But yeah, I mean, just like he's in a room and like you know he's got his magic. How much do we have to borrow any of his magic? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I know oh, he's on the chat. It's the it's the Terminator version of Nicholas, I guess. So it's really yeah, really scary. It is scary, in fact, when you think about it. It's really scary. Yeah. Uh, next up, also linked to Substance to Alchemist is, is Project Captus. We, we introduced Project Captus last year, and this is a joint project between Adobe and uh, the Substance team and uh, HP, and to build a material scanner um, and kind of democratize material scanning, and, and um, because that, that would be a pretty affordable, affordable scanner. Um, and, and the goal here is really to, uh, you, you have a physical material, uh, you use that, that scanner it's going to sense the data, the data set to Alchemist. Alchemist automatically process it and give you a digital material that's ready to use. Um, so it's really end-to-end -end process for scanning scanning materials. Um, and the cool thing is that it's it's actually modular uh, uh, hardware. So um, the hardware can be kind of folded back and put in the backpack. I can work on batteries, so you can go on site somewhere to scan stuff um, uh, on the go. So it, it's really cool. Uh, currently, it's still in the in the prototyping phase. Uh, we're still working with partners to uh, to make sure the process works great and everything. And we'll have more news. Uh, we'll have more news later on on an eventual um, availability of it. Uh, all right, capture now. And I think after that, we're gonna we're gonna go to medium. Um, so Adobe Capture. I don't know if 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 uh, all of you know what Adobe Capture is. Uh, it's a mobile app from Adobe, um, and that allows you to capture. All kind of uh, all kind of things from uh, just with your with your phone uh, camera, you can um, capture images and convert them into uh, vector graphics, brushes, or uh, color um, uh, color sets, color swatches, and also I don't know if you know that, but uh, Adobe Capture includes bitmap to material, so you can actually use that that free. It's a free Adobe app. Um, you can use it to capture uh, material by just pointing your phone at a, at a, at a surface. It will use bitmap to material and some tiling um, method to create a material for you. Um, and so right now it uses bitmap to material. We're working with the capture team uh, to integrate that new AI powered image material that I just showed that's in Alchemist directly into your phone. Um, and that will be available later this year. I was super excited about this as well. Uh, oh, we got the launcher. Uh, so launcher. Um, Launcher is, is doing great. Uh, we have we have tons of people using it. Uh, we have great feedback, and um, there is almost three hundred thousand materials have been downloaded from the launcher from Substance Source. Um, Eighty thousand materials have been sent directly to the Substance Source because you can launcher you can just click on the material in Substance Source, send it directly to your shelf in Painter, in Alchemist, or in Designer. Uh, people love this feature, and um, you can also download mesh from from Sketchfab, and and uh, a lot of people have been been downloading these assets from, from Sketchfab as well. So we have big plans for the launcher. Uh, you'll soon see a tab that allows you to have access to all the different plugins and integrations of the Substance ecosystem. So you don't have to kind of look for them in a different website. You have like a centralized place where you can find all that information. I'm talking about, uh, and uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it for launcher. 
And I think we're going to be talking about Medium next. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Man, that was that was just an amazing amount of information, which was awesome. Thank you for sharing that. This is just a lot to look forward to. So everyone, I'm now finally proud to introduce <laughs> Kelly. I know I jumped the gun earlier, but I'm just so excited to have the Medium team uh, joining the Substance team. So everyone, I'd love to introduce Kelly, uh, product manager for Medium. Kelly, thank you for being here. Take it away. Hey everybody, yeah, so I'm Kelly. I'm the PM for the Medium team. I'm super, super excited to be here um, and talking with this audience for the first time. And me and the Medium team, we're incredibly excited to be at Adobe now. And we're working alongside the Substance team, which is just a true match made in heaven. Uh, we're aligned on so, so many things around product, but one of the most important things is how we engage with our uh, amazing community of artists. So we're big believers in working closely with our users and to provide early access, beta testing, and capturing all that really great feedback that directly um, you know, applies to the development of the tool. It's been a crucial part of Medium success, and we're super happy to be um, on a team and at a company where uh, everybody shares that same philosophy. Um, so a lot of you probably are not familiar with Medium. So this is just a really quick high level intro. Medium is a VR sculpting tool. We're currently available on the Oculus Rift. When artists try Medium for the first time, they instantly understand the advantage of creating 3D assets inside of VR. You're creating 3D in 3D. And there are a lot of things you get for free by being in VR, things like your head movement, which can replicate camera angles. And you can also pick up and grab your model and hold it close to your face and do detailed work, just like you would in real life. And it's really easy to play with scale and composition. You get this immediate feedback on you know, what you're working with and how your art is, is looking. Um, it's a really intuitive way of working. Um, so obviously, the, the biggest thing is just getting over that neutral hump and learning your way around the software. Um, so this is a video, uh, just a quick, quick overview of some of the core sculpting tools we have inside of Medium, as well as scene management. And we also have some things for our hard surface work. One of our most popular tools is Elastic Move. So Elastic Move gives Medium its one of its superpowers, which is modeling organic shapes. It allows this physically based sculpting of a virtual elastic material. You just grab the part of the mesh that you're wanting to change and you pull and twist with your hands and you get volume preserving deformation. So artists use Medium for all different kinds of projects, um, but our two biggest use cases for Medium are look development and asset creation. For look development, we have 2D artists jumping right into Medium to quickly generate base renders on their own, which they then take into something like Photoshop for paintovers. And that's what you're seeing here. By artist Finian McManus, he used Medium to create his base shapes for the props, the towers, and the hero model. And then he took those into Photoshop and did this incredible final concept art. Um, for asset creation, we export FBX and OBJ with watertight meshes, so you can take your model into any other texturing or painting program for further work. This art is by Jama Jorabayev, and he started with Medium and then took it into Blender to, his to apply his custom clay textures and do his final renders. So we specifically designed Medium to be really general purpose and to fit into existing art pipelines. This allows artists to um, have the freedom to create whatever they need to create and use it in whatever tools they need to use it in. Um, so yeah, as I said, that's a really high level, short taste of medium use, Medium's uses and capabilities. Um, you'll start to see and hear more and more from us in the coming months, especially as we get closer to our first release under Adobe. Um, and as you can probably all imagine, um, moving a team and a product to a new company has a lot of logistics involved. So this uh, first update has taken a little longer than normal, um, but we have so many awesome things planned, uh, including some really cool new sculpting tools. We also have a couple of new engineers on the Medium team, one from Tilt Brush and one from Dreams. And this is really gonna help us take Medium to the next level over the next 18 months or so. And as we get closer to that first release, we're going to be doing more detailed product live streams, our first of which will be with Geo Knackpill. So Geo is a total master of medium, and he's worked at places like Valve and ILM. At ILM, he worked on the Hulk for the Avengers movie. Like, he is a legit sculptor. 
Um, he's currently at Oculus and he's been an awesome artist partner with us over the years. He's really helped us develop an improved medium. So stay tuned on more details for that live stream um, and our update, we're aiming for mid-May um, and we can't wait to share more as we get closer and to like get to know all of the substance users a little bit better. Awesome, thank you, Kelly. We're, we're super you, Kelly. excited to have you guys. Uh, playing with Medium is, is so much fun and, and the stuff we're building together is gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. I know, it's like, I can't hardly stand it. Like it's <laughs> just constantly <laughs> talking about it to people and it's a really exciting thing. Yeah, we're all saying. big fans of Substance. We love using Medium even, even in our you know, home personal projects. Oh, that, I know. I love it. It's, it's, I, I feel kind of insanely fortunate that this all worked out. It's match made in heaven, legitimately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to switch back to uh, integration and we'll, we'll talk about, uh, Davide, we'll talk about the research stuff, the cool secret stuff that we're working on at Adobe. Um, so a, a couple of words about uh, some of the, the recent substance uh, integrations. Uh, we released recently a new uh, Houdini plugin, um, and uh, it was built in, in in partnership with with the Houdini guys. It allows you to uh, load the substance as BSAR uh, via uh, the cops, so that allows you to basically have uh, access to substance through all the different parts or modules in Houdini. You can use substance as an input of anything in Houdini, which gives you amazing an amazing power you can also chain substance nodes together to create uh to create even more amazing effects so we're super super excited about what people are going to do with this uh, uh hey jeremy also yeah. too uh i want to throw a special shout out to uh luis cruel from the uh side effects labs team luis uh, worked uh, with our integrations team super close to build this so so uh we're, it was awesome to be able to work with luis awesome yeah thank you luis Next up is Unreal Engine. So again, we released a new version of Unreal Engine plugin recently, um, and uh, we're now support. We're now part of the supporting the, the default kind of texture format in Unreal. So that means that we can publish to any platform, so including mobile. So anytime you use Substance in your project, you can now publish on Unreal on any platform without any trouble. Uh, we're also supporting the texture streaming system of, of Unreal now. Um, and a new plugin comes with a, a few cool new options. Uh, when you import a material, you can actually choose to use a template. So you can import a substance and you have templates for uh, displacements or uh, world aligned materials, uh, refraction, all these custom materials that would take time to build a graph for. Uh, we actually included some templates for you to, to, to already have them set up. And you can actually create your own templates and add them to the list as well. Uh, so it just allows you to kind of, uh, of um, streamline your, your Unreal workflow. And finally, Moto plugin. We actually released the Moto plugin a couple of hours ago. Uh, the new Moto plugin. So with support for Moto 14, um, support for value output. So I don't know if you know, but in Substance Designer, you can output textures, but you can now also output values like vectors or floats um, to drive more complex shader effects, for example. So now Moto uh, support those as well. Uh, we also have the macOS Catalina support, and uh, we made the source code uh, available for everyone on Git as well. A uh, quick word about Substance Share. Uh, we had uh, shared last time that Substance Share would that a new version of Substance Share was in the works. It is still in the works. Um, uh, we'll be having a beta probably in a couple of, in the next couple of months uh, for release later this year. But we're super excited about Share V2. Uh, there'll be there'll be a ton of of cool tool to um, kind of streamline the upload and sharing of of, of assets. We're looking, for example, at using uh, using our, our new fantastic PBR node to be able to create thumbnails for you automatically so you don't have to deal with it. And everybody has like consistent thumbnails across the platform. So there's a lot of cool stuff we're working on on the share, share front. Substance source. Um, so in substance source, we have a lot of, lot of news. Uh, substance source uh, team has been very busy. Um, one of the things that we uh, released last month was a signature drop by Enrico Tamekan that was uh, a theme around um, fantasy materials. So we have some cool kind of uh, medieval walls, armor, uh, some stones, and some uh, like parchments, maps, uh, really, really cool uh, materials uh, from Enrico. And uh, last week, we also released 100 stylized material that were built internally by the, by the Substance Source team. Um, and this is, again, amazing kind of stylized uh, material that you don't really see that often built with Substance Designer. And all these are procedural, so they come with the Substance uh, the SBS graph, so you can kind of see how we achieved, the Substance Source team achieved this uh, stylized look. And this, this, this look amazing. 
and finally, we have a new pack coming up, uh, I believe next week or the week after, uh, of urban decals. And some of some decals that we're using earlier on Substance Painter actually come from this pack. Um, and everything you see here on this image from uh, the paint to uh, the manhole cover, um, the uh, sidewalk um, printing, the um, the uh, different little concrete areas, all these are decals, uh, the uh, little pebbles and everything. All these are decals that are that will be part of that collection. There's a hundred of them, I think a little more than a hundred of them. Um, and uh, we have another scene here where again, um, the scene is pretty bare bone if you just look at the textures, but there's tons of decals on the wall with drips and, and impacts and decals and, and uh, tags and all kind of stuff. So uh, we're also super excited about this. We're, we're finishing up the, the pack right now and it should be available very soon. Uh, and now it's up to uh, Davide's part. Jeremy, thank you so much, man. So thank you, guys. Uh, you take a break. <laughs> yeah, I know you take it was, a break. <laughs> I know it was long. My, my throat is, is getting a little uh, a little dry. Yeah, but you had so much awesome stuff to <laughs> announce, man. So yeah, sit back, man. Take a break. So uh, next up, everyone, uh, we have Davide. So uh, he is senior R and D manager, and uh, we can't wait to see what he has for us. Davide, take it away, man. Hello everyone. So we've been busy, super busy actually, in research and labs together with the other core and R&D teams. So today we're super excited to share what we've been up to and give you some peeks of what may become. So first off, now that um, we joined Adobe, uh, we looked at extending some cool technology that their groups researched already. So I know we're all excited about having Photoshop brushes in Painter, but do you remember the paint uh, content aware field from Photoshop? Let's see a video about what we did with it. So as shown on SIGGRAPH, we transferred this technology to Substance Alchemist. It's called internally patch match um, because we can figure out how to replace whole areas of a texture. It can really save a lot of time the one would otherwise spend with maybe a clone brush or just doing it by hand. But now, why do we have to stop at images when alchemists can do whole materials? Now, bringing together the power of substance with patch match, we can now have smart multi-channel material filler, the one you've been waiting for. This is the way available today on alchemists, so have fun with it. Wow, that's awesome, man. Cool name too, patch match. <laughs> staying, staying with alchemists, uh, Jeremy talked about uh, image to material. Now, this is an evolution, and some of you may remember our AI-based delighter that we showed last year. This new milestone brought together machine learning with new technology from our core team. And of course, actually, there is some substance engine magic in there. So let's, uh, let's watch a video, buddy, to see what you can do with it. Okay, that is uh, that is seriously amazing technology, man. That is that is really awesome. We had a lot of fun with it, and uh, I, it's it's really it's really cool to see how far we come with that. Um, but now let's uh, here's another project that is dear to both VFX and gaming hearts. Today, Substance Designer, as Jeremy mentioned before, has a new Python API that lets us extend the MDL graph with new definitions. Now, we've been playing with Material X for a couple of years doing several projects, but this is really where we wanted to land. 
Now, this because this opens the door to make a proper integration with Material X, which is an open source uh, shading system. Now, let's play the first video of Material X. Uh, this is how it feels to work with it. This project was a fruit of collaboration with our twin group called Special Projects, as well as Lucasfilm, and later even Autodesk for the shader generation part. Uh, you find that this shader graph feels a lot like the MDL one, but it can export to Material X. Uh, Material X in turn can export to shading languages such as OSL for film, GLSL, HLSL, and now MDL2, effectively covering most targets we would ever want. Also, why do we care? Um, creating variations through the shaders instead of textures can have great benefits in terms of memory, flexibility, resolution, but also how, how its variation can be created. So that also opens the door to being able to define a truly portable shaders for both interactive and full quality offline imagery across many tools and renderers, making substance materials usable everywhere. So here's, for example, the same shader open outside of our tools in Material X Viewer. And in the next video, uh, we brought the same shader to Painter with all the shaders working just the same. Lucasfilm was kind enough to let us use BB-8. So before we return him, we better clean him up nicely. Okay, that's wow. awesome. We got BB-8 all cleaned up. <laughs> so if you wanna give the try, you will find it today as a downloadable plugin on Substance Share. And um, no, actually tomorrow. And uh, if you want to geek out on the details, uh, check out Substance Magazine on our website. We have an article where we go and geek out in all the details. So next. Let's, uh, let's talk about a recent project we've been working that initially originated in an Adobe research in a completely different form, and that we would like to turn into a brush for substance paint. Have you ever gotten tired of having to tumble the view continuously to paint around an object? Well, we might just have an answer for you. Let's play a video about it. That was great. I love the dancing meat mat. Nice. Yeah, it's can bust some moves here from Mixamo, yeah. by the way. <laughs> He's a good dance. Oh, yes. Uh, good. From Mixamo as well. Tell, you can tell we did this video around Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> so let's stay on uh, Substance Painter here. We've been sharing our experiments in the last few years with a VR version of Painter. I see there were some questions on the on the thread. So while it's still now a production ready tool, we are very excited to share our new milestone, which is now working on several VR headsets. And our, as a, it has now our own uh, native widgets, so we don't depend on a specific API. Let's play a video. And also thanks to Bryce Laville San Martin for letting us mess with these awesome models once again.
Okay, that is that is great. I actually got a chance to try Painter VR last year when we had our team global gathering, man. It was it was a blast to play with. Yeah, it was really fun to work with too. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, Rob Rush is not yet uh, re released on Painter. It, this is something uh, we're still developing and uh, improving on. And uh, the same is uh, true for Painter VR. But uh, as you saw today, now with new teams joining our adventure in 3D content creation, I'm super excited about Medium, we are no longer making just textures and materials. So before we leave, I'd like to uh, show a tiny peek of some additional collaboration now with, with Sync our teeth, with Geometry, with, uh, and with Adobe Research. Here, um, the next slide, here are some smart uh, manipulation that our group have been testing on static models, such as USD or ABJ files that you may have built or found online and that are not rigged. Uh, so this is just one of many projects, of course, and still very early stage. So stay tuned, stay home, be safe, and back to you, Wes. Davide, thank you, man. That was awesome. And uh, just to clarify that we had just a few questions in the chat about research and labs. So you, you are part of the substance team. Can you just explain a little bit about, about what your department does? All right. So we are one of several uh, R&D groups. Uh, our group is called Research and Labs. It used to be called just Labs before, and now we're doing more research. Um, and uh, yeah, we're focusing on doing prototypes for uh, advanced technologies that may or may not ship. So we're kind of doing experimental things that are a little more risky. And uh, hopefully we'll try to deploy things on products. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, everyone. So uh, now we are going to move into the Q&A portion of our keynote. So we have some questions that have been queued up and we're gonna be able to uh, chat with the team here. So uh, Jeremy, I think I'll ask you to put us into the, uh, the gallery view for everybody. Yep. And I'm going to get the questions together here. And while Jeremy's doing that, I do want to give a shout out to uh, our communications and marketing teams. We have Maureen and Vincent. They're in the chat. They are amazing uh, people to work with. They're working hard on gathering questions. So thanks, guys. Okay, so I have this, uh, this list here that's been compiled. And uh, let's see, we're going to start with Painter. So I'm just going to start kind of throwing some of these questions out here. So the first one being, uh, is there any way to bend, transform a mask in Substance Painter uh, and move it with a gizmo? Maybe this one's for you, Jeremy. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So it, they're asking if there's any way to uh, bend or transform a mask in Substance Painter. Uh, they're basically saying, can they move it with a gizmo? Like a transform uh, or something. Yeah, there's a, there's a transform there's a transform two D effect that you can use, uh, which is in the in the filter section of the shelf, and and that will allow you to, as basically just a substance mode with a transformation mode in it, um, and that will give you a gizmo that you can move around in two D. Um, if if we could we could think about having more nodes to do that, especially now with Substance Designer, we see a lot of people doing some advanced transforms and 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 different things, um, that um. That could be used uh, without saying too much. I'll say that we're working on a nice and clean solutions for this that will probably blow your head, but that will be for later this year. But we're 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 working on this. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so still again, these next several questions are for Painter. So this one is: Does the EXR support output to a single EXR file with multiple image planes? Uh, basically, I guess can you put like uh, can you pack channels in the EXR file? Uh, it's not something we can do today, uh, but that's something we could look at definitely. But it's it's not an option in the in the current current version. Okay, so yeah, with DXR we can you can have multiple images within one file. So ours, when you export, it's only it's, it's only one, one image. Yeah, okay, it's be one image. Okay, and uh, here's another one. Any word on using AMD or Metal on Mac for Painter? In general, the future dev with AMD. Uh, there is there is work. Uh, there is work ongoing, I would say, in general, at Adobe uh, and, and through the 3D apps to um, to move towards more future-proof uh, APIs such as Vulkan and, and, and Metal. Uh, it's not, we don't have anything to share at this point, but it's something we, we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, this one's kind of a follow-up, I guess, from the first one, but can we get a move tool in Painter like Photoshop? Yes, please, I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we, we can look at that, definitely. Yeah. Uh, is there something being done to make handling, uh, I'm sorry, to make hand painting and substance painter work more fluently, so not using Windows Ink? So I guess today we're using Windows Ink. What, 
what can we say about that? So we're using Windows Inc. Uh, so using Windows Inc, I think I think in the last release we fixed most of the issues. So for at first in the first release, I agree, we have some issues with, with Windows Inc. And there's still a few um, that we're that we're trying to fix. Um, in the in the meantime, we're we're trying to work with with uh, Wacom and, and Microsoft to make sure that rather than not use Windows Inc to make Windows Inc better if we can, uh, because Windows Inc just uh, just allows us to support much more hardware and and um, it just uh, for 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 a lot of people who have kind of exotic brands of of uh, tablets, it makes the support much much easier for us. Um, but we're we're working on on fixing the last remaining issues and making sure that this is a good experience. Okay, awesome. Uh, will Painter uh, be able to export with OCIO color support? We're, we're, we'll be working on, on color management this year. Uh, I don't have any TA to give you, but um, definitely it will be one of the one of the focus this year. All right. Uh, the UV packing, uh, I guess that you mentioned earlier, will it pack into islands with gaps as well, straighten edges, optimize for least distortion? I will try to do all that. Uh, we have... Uh, <laughs> We we're working on better way to, um, to kind of seam the islands and 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 uh, cut them in more pieces than they are today to 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 be more efficient. Uh, but all these like straight edges and stuff like that is stuff that we'll be looking at over time. We're uh, going for these one at a time. But yeah, definitely we would want all these features at some point. Yeah. Uh, okay. So is the is the Wacom pen sensibility uh, or I guess sensitivity fixed in mouse mode in Painter with the next release? That's a very good question that I don't have an answer to. Um, I, I I do not know. I will have to. Okay. I will have to ask the team. Okay. Uh, is development plan to allow you to paint something, then move it across the model, or paint and move, say, to the other side? I guess, kind of, again, going back to that that transform it's kind of like the concept. transform transform concept. Um, yeah, there's there is there's stuff we're working on. Again, it's yeah. it's, it's long term, but we're working on on things for this. And I guess kind of what you showed earlier in the presentation with like the decal support. Deca set, the decal I mean. is one solution. Uh, we're looking at, at other ways to do this. Again, I can't, it's, it's still early, so I can talk in details, but we're, we're looking at improving that, that kind of workflow. Okay, so uh, any plans for uh, fonts integration into Painter? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I would love for us to have plans to integrate fonts into Painter, especially now that we're at Adobe and we have all these fonts that we can that we can uh, that we can access. Um, there's there's no current work being done, but it's something that I think a lot of us would would like to have. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are, are we? <laughs> this is a good one. Are we ever going to get lights in the renderer in Painter? I've asked uh, this one too. I lights in the renderer in Painter. Uh, I would say likely not. Um, no. Not every part of Adobe. Um, and we have Adobe Dimension with us, which is which is basically a tool built for uh, putting scenes together, lighting them, and rendering them. And it has amazing lighting tools. Um, our focus is probably going to be on uh, improving Dimension so that you can very quickly, you're in Painter, you click a button, you render in Dimension in like a few seconds, and that that's probably going to be the workflow we're going to go go towards. So. Probably not lights in Painter, but a very, very quick way to render your things using Dimension. OK. Uh, OK, here's another one. Uh, how about swatches in Painter, color swatches? And it, and it has a please. <laughs> There's a please? Uh, we can yeah. do that then. No, uh, we, we have plans, definitely, to have, to have swatches. And, and again, it's a, it's kind of a more of a, a not a we part of Adobe. Adobe has, as you know, um, Adobe libraries, which is uh, collections cloud in the cloud of colors and, and visuals and textures and materials and stuff like that. Um, and and the plan is to integrate those libraries into all the Adobe tools, including substance tools. So uh, having swatches in there would make would make a lot of sense. Yeah, and so that one kind of had a second part to it is just basically, can we have a colored palette for Painter? Do, do we have uh, plans to, to rework the color picker or the color in Painter? We have plans. We don't have ETAs or anything, but we have plans, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and there's another question coming in here in real time. As just as I, I was getting ready to move on, any plans for the height baker in Painter? Uh, there are there are, there are plans to to work on the baking uh, on on Painter in general, and that would probably be part of it. Again, I can I can give any specifics, but but definitely that that's part of the plan. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So uh, switching topics a bit, this is kind of more substance designer material X focused. Uh, so this one is saying, uh, 
Let's see. Okay. Does this mean it's up to studios to add support for OSL? Uh, is Material X meant to be the bridge for OSL? Go ahead. Dan. All right. So yeah. Material X, I, I can answer if you want. Um, OSL is already a supported output of Material X. Um, I don't know how far the integration currently goes with uh, the RDFs, but patterns are fully supported and they are accurate. In fact, uh, the developer of OSL, Larry Gritz, uh, or uh, has actually contributed himself to the project. Okay, and and I guess part of the, that question too is they were wondering this since not all renderers support Material X yet. That's uh, the idea. No renderer supports Material X right now, and uh, the idea is that it exports to the shader language you want. Yeah, so as okay. long as your renderer supports OSL, then you should be fine building your Material X and then exporting to OSL. You should get a one-to-one -one result. Right, OSL, MDL, GLSL, HLSL. Yep. Uh, at the moment, there's those, but it's extensible. So you, there is, I'm pretty sure there are others in development. Okay, uh, so <laughs> this is a big one. Uh, when can we see a procedural modeling tool from the Substance team? Ah. I love tuned. this question. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, okay. All right, shaders can uh, be imported into Maya or Unreal. Uh, I guess that's coming question coming from the, the presentation you guys were doing earlier. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it was under the Material X stuff. Shaders can be imported into Maya or Unreal. I think that's what it says. So yes, the shaders currently work uh, uh, in Maya, actually um, natively, because Maya has Material X support. It's actually uh, one of the people, uh, out of this was one of the early supporters of the of the uh, of the project in, in itself, um, so you don't even need to export shaders to Material X uh, uh, from Material X to Maya. Uh, Maya can import Material X directly. I think Unreal would have to import some shader, and uh, I'm pretty sure somebody can come up uh, with an easy integration of Material X to work directly on Unreal. Okay. Uh, so this next question is, uh, any plans for like a reference node in SD, like a, and they're saying a feature to like drop a node and reference anything in the graph and not have to have uh, uh, noodles everywhere or connection lines? Interesting. Uh, I don't know if you have any plans for that, but that's a good feature request. Yeah, does that relate at all to the, 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 the feature we have listed as experimental where you can uh, open a graph in context so you can... It's, it's, it's... It's not the same, but um, but it would it would it would make sense to have a a, a node that's basically a shortcut to another node, uh, especially if you have a, a, a very big graph. Um, that's something that we would we, we'd like to we we would need to discuss with the with the substance designer team. But it's a good point. No plans today, but okay. Cool, cool. And uh, th this one, <laughs> this one was, it says any plans for that edge baker? Uh, I, it, I think it was for me, like I did a tweet where I was trying to make a filter for, for creating edge and I, and I didn't finish it. So uh, that's yeah something that I was wanting to, to try to finish on. But what I need to do is I need to visit Nicholas's, uh, you know, magic castle and <laughs> get some of his wizardry help or whatever. So may maybe it's something we'll pick back up. Uh, okay, so now uh, there, here's some questions underneath uh, Alchemist. So Materia, many people asking about how will it work with Fabric? That we had a lot of questions about that when you guys were showcasing Materia. Uh, it works with pretty much anything. It, 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 it depends on the on the input image, but uh, the goal is to, is to train on as many materials as possible. Um, right now it works great on anything that uh, is walls or grounds and stuff like that. Um, I think it would require a little more testing on, on Fabric um to see if it works as as well as it works on on the other materials uh but i don't see why it wouldn't work i don't know david if you have any insight on this but i don't see any the current limitation right now is that uh, alpha support the translucency is limited because we've been training on capturing grounds which don't have a light shining through but um it's something you can adjust after applying material as additional filters i think it would be nice to have it there. We should continue. So for like that. opaque, for like opaque fabric, that should it should work the same way as it would work for grounds, I guess. Yeah. So kind of a somewhat of a follow up question: like, does Materia allow for multiple image inputs to get a more accurate result? So 
sorry, can you repeat? Oh, I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, guys, sorry about that. So uh, again, kind of a follow up with Materia. Does it allow for multiple image inputs to get a more accurate result? I think at the moment only supports uh, a single one. It, it takes the color actually from a specific channel of, um, of Alchemist. This is the Alchemist in, in implementation, of course. But if you have multiple images, uh, you can start using something like uh, the, the importer the Alchemist has, which is a, a photogrammetry one. And uh, using that, uh, or photometry. And you, using that, you can get a better approximation of your channels and then apply image to material on top of that and then choose which outputs look better. So yes, in a way you can do it, but it's not a direct input to material. Okay. Uh, this one, this next question is, where is Substance Go for mobile texture scanning? Um, I'm not, not sure I, I know what this one is. Re Maybe it's referring to the Adobe Capture you showed, the mobile app? I think Substance Go is something we, we talked about a long time ago. Uh, and that was a project oh, okay. uh, of, uh, I don't know, Sebastian, if you have, if you have some, some, uh, some Yeah, sense. we, we had, yeah, a long time ago, we had a bitmap to material mobile. Yes. And, uh, and I think it's, it's what like you're referring to hopefully. I mean, and, uh, but capture capture will be like the receptacle for everything mobile and mobile captured. We want to, we want to add in capture today. You already have like a, a bit of the material. Hopefully we'll have material soon or something that lets you take a picture of something, uh, fire up a service on somewhere, even, uh, online or or local and then <clears throat> use that uh, in, in the dimension tools and medium and, and substance obviously <clears throat> everywhere so that uh, uh, but yeah capture will be the, the entry point for, for everything capturing everything capture yeah I remember the bitmap to material mobile app man I, that's that's going back a bit but I love that app I remember that thing was, yep. that was killer uh, that was, but, that was uh, cool. yeah. yeah, but Jeremy, as you said, the, the B2M part of that is actually in Adobe Capture now. So it's yeah, so you pretty much have a bitmap bit to material mobile in, in Adobe Capture okay. today. It's it's free to use. Uh and uh but we'll have we'll have more interesting uh, uh capture uh use cases soon in capture as well. Oh cool. Uh, okay, <laughs> this this question here is coming from Steve Telkowski. Steve, what's up? Hi Steve. So he, and he yeah, hey Steve. So he says that when can I start using material on my iPhone so I can capture all the PBR textures with a lot of exclamation points and a happy face? As soon as possible. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean we're we're looking at, at the end of the year at this point. It, it's yeah. not a firm ETA, but that's what we're looking at. Yeah, and I think that's there's a few follow-ups here, like the next one. When can we play with materia? The same, I mean, same in, thing. So yeah, in Alchemist, in Alchemist, you'll be able to play very soon. Um, I think oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, we're looking at, at before before the summer. Okay. Okay. And uh, is there a, an Adobe Capture to Substance pipeline anywhere? Do we? I think. Do we have any info on that in the magazine or anything? We're we're working on that with the with the Capture team um, to be able to to send materials from from Capture to the Substance tools and to Substance Share and things like that. That it's it's in progress. Okay. Okay. Uh, how about uh, will decals be added to Alchemist? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think I think we'd like to have to have a better decal system in Alchemist at some point. Uh, it's not on the current roadmap, uh, but um, that's definitely a feature that we would like to have in there at some point. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay, here's a few HP Scanbox questions. Uh, Oh wait, 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 Marine has it listed as not a question, but funny. It says, looks like a Dalek scanner <laughs> and a question of price. I don't, I don't know if we're talking about that or. We're not talking about price. Uh, it's, it's, it will be the, the, the goal is to make it affordable. Uh, I yeah. can't really say more than that. Uh, it, it won't be like a crazy overpriced uh, device. We're, we're making it so that um, as many people as possible can use it. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so moving on. Uh, medium, Kelly, we have some medium questions for you. So uh, let's see here. Uh, is, there a, is there a hope for a smaller bug fix patch of medium soon, or are we waiting for the next big release? Oh, I know. This is really painful, and I know that it's very painful for our users. Trust that it's so painful for the team, too, because we've been sitting on this for a while. Um, I can just say that we have those bugs fixed. We have the build ready to ship. It's just some logistics stuff that we have to work through. 
Um, it is so painful for us to be sitting on these bugs for so long. And I know you guys have been so patient with us. Um, just a little bit longer, a little bit longer. We'll ship it as soon as we can. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kelly. Uh, okay, so here's a, here's another question. It's kind of, a, I don't know if you guys can answer. Will Medium, <laughs> will Medium be part of the Substance subscription? Oh, um, I, <laughs> I think we're still working on all of that. I don't know if somebody else wants to, maybe Seb wants to talk about yeah, that. No, it's, <laughs> thanks Seb, so. Seb. Yeah. Sorry. We, we don't know, but yeah, the goal is, the goal is to have something that has it all, right? So everything that we're doing, we want to, that's one of the advantages of, uh, uh, and I think like uh, the value of uh, subscription is actually you get, you get a package, you get something uh, very significant that evolves with uh, every every release, every every day, every month, every quarter, and um, yeah, the plan is the plan is to have something complete. Uh, and but we, we cannot share much at that stage. And uh, I have to say also, we were about to uh, to share uh, some information about uh, along these lines for this year. Um, I mean, somewhere uh, this year, uh, we're not sure we can do it due to the uh, COVID. Uh, 19 situation, uh, which is uh, slowing down things uh, uh, in some areas, not in the product development as you've seen, but in some areas when, when it comes to releasing new stuff like uh, announcing, showcasing, etc. So uh, we're, we're currently redefining all the plans. And so the, the short answer is um, uh, we don't know yet and we were, <laughs> we were working, working on it. Okay, thank you, Seb. Uh, and I guess this one too, also asking, will the medium pricing be changed? Again, probably not something we can talk about yet. No, I mean, same, I think- Same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah no. same thing. I know, I know that so the, the, the medium VR version that exists in the Oculus store, um, the current plan is for that to, to remain as is. So as an entitled app for Oculus. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I guess follow-up question when we talk about that is, is Medium coming to other headsets? Like, uh, will it support HTC Vive especially? Yeah, so n no like official information to share on that other than um, the fact that we are at Adobe now um, and not a first-party Oculus app really opens up a lot of different options. We have, um, you know, all sorts of different directions we could take this and we're super excited to explore, explore all of that. Um, but yeah, no actual news to share, but I think you can probably figure out <laughs> the fact that we're not at Oculus only opens options for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, we're excited again, to explore it. Again, again yeah, I can, I can say, yeah, to, 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 to Kelly's point. Yeah, definitely. We want to keep like uh, supporting the, uh, the the awesome Oculus uh, platform uh, as long as, as possible. And yeah. uh, like that there is no plan right now to do anything else than do that. Uh, but we also want to, to be agnostic and, 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 and put it on as many devices as possible and every surfaces, every devices, everywhere. So yes, I, yeah. I guess the short answer is yes. We don't know when exactly. We don't want no. um, uh, under uh, what time frame right. really, but yeah, it will happen. I guess the exciting thing is, is we have medium and the horizons are, are pretty wide open now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, okay, so uh, this one, this question here is asking, should we worry about VR for now? Because it's not, that common, but seeing the workflow, it might take over the current 3D process. Do you want to answer, Kelly? <laughs> I mean, yes. Well, I can, I can answer a little bit if you want. Maybe it's it's a, it's an amazing area where you can learn a lot. Uh, as as Kelly said earlier, um, being in uh, immersed in this environment when you create with your asset removes so many barriers. Uh, when you have the six doc. Like type of inputs, it's 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 adding to a lot to the creative process. So yes, we should absolutely look at the, at what VR has to offer because um, um, that will uh, benefit everything we do anyway, and it will grow as well. And it will grow with VR, it will grow with AR, it will grow with XR as as a whole, right? So we will have more type of inputs, and we want to definitely embrace all these. Uh, also, uh, medium is based on a <clears throat> very interesting piece of technology called the uh, sign distance fields that can that can be used everywhere, right? So it's in VR right now. And when I was uh, talking about uh, many surfaces, maybe <clears throat> maybe we can we can have like some part of it or some some form of it uh, non VR and but maybe still with different type of input. So anyway, we're exploring all that. And by taking this VR road, we're ahead of the curve and we're preparing for the future, but also 
um, making moves for the for the very immediate uh, uh, next term, next like present almost. So yes, absolutely, um, it is. This is very special environment. It's I wouldn't say niche. It's it's a special thing. And as soon as you 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 wear the heads up, the headset, sorry, you understand how, how special it is. Uh, but yes, it is um, absolutely an area where we want to to be active right now and uh, and benefit from in the other uh, areas as well. I wouldn't say it will take over absolutely. I mean, this is a, it's a tool. The VR is one way to work, and then there's a, a desktop is another way to work, and they have their strengths and weaknesses. And actually, one of the things we we learned by testing with the VR is that you in VR you get a much better appreciation of the model, the scale, the quality um, of the surfaces that you're working on. But then you add some limitation. You have six degrees of freedom, but then you have maybe uh, widgets are not the same. And it's, I think it's nice to be able to have both next to each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't think VR will take over in the sense they will remove other tools from the mm. list of what we can do. But it will definitely make a nice addition to the world. Okay, awesome, awesome. So uh, this one, it, will Medium get sub D tools? Um, probably not, <laughs> but I, yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's switch categories. Labs, uh, Davide, we got some questions here. Uh, does the, <laughs> oh, okay, oh, okay. Uh, does the dancing uh, meet Matt mean Painter can import animation formats in the future? Uh, the animation was done uh, through Mixamo. I can't speak for what tools will have animation. Uh, we're not currently testing animation in, in labs. Okay. Not, okay. not the animation as character animation. <laughs> okay, it's, this was uh, not really a question, but kind of a cool comment. Someone in the chat just said that uh, Davide's team is just a bunch of geniuses. So yeah, I can yeah, I think we can all we can all agreed, definitely agreed. testify to that. Yes. Thanks, Emmanuel. And and dress the part yeah. too. Dress the part yeah, too. Yes, yes, <laughs> and dress the part. Yes. Very cool. Uh okay. Uh let's see. We had a few integration questions. One of how does substance integration handle opacity and unity? That's a very good question. I don't have an answer to. Uh, uh, I guess I, I guess maybe I can take you do, that right? One. Wes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can take that one. Uh, so, uh, like, if you're working in Substance Designer and you have an opacity output, uh, what it does is when you're using the Substance and Unity plugin, it just takes the, the it recognizes you have the output, it just packs it into the um, to the alpha channel of the of the base map. So RGBA and then and the alpha of the base map. You also have the capability within Unity to change some of those packing orders, like maybe where that alpha is going to go and the unity plugin gives you a little drop down where you can actually change some of the packing to that so um, yeah we do support opacity uh, so this one here is asking do substance textures still need to have gamma adjustments when importing into 3ds max arnold renderer i guess i could take that one too <laughs> uh yeah so i know this one <laughs> so with the 3ds max plugin uh well jeremy i'd like to ask you this one for painter so i'll take if you're using the plugin so 3ds max substance in 3ds max uh the plugin kind of handles all of the uh all of the interpretation of the textures that are being handled into the shader so you don't have to do anything but jeremy this is a question so say for example someone's in painter they've done their asset they export their maps and they're going to use it in, in Painter. Let's say they're just using the Metal Rough configuration. They're going to use some of the new PBR materials in 3ds Max. What do they need to? I think they actually do need to set the gamma value on the texture to to have it interpret correctly. Uh, it would probably depend on the version of 3ds Max. I know with the latest 3ds Max 2021, um, it just it just plugs it like you don't have anything to do. You just plug it the new uh, PBR Metal Rough material in 3ds Max, and it just works in real time and in Arnold. OK, awesome. And so I guess uh, another kind of, I guess, a follow-up question I've seen people ask is like, when we do export textures out of Substance Painter, we don't embed color space in those, right? So for example, you're, you're not able to say to flag the roughness texture and, and, and export that out as a linear map, right? Doesn't it just? We, do, we don't we don't flag them or, or do any kind of metadata at the, at the, at the moment. Um, I would imagine once we uh, integrate um, color management. We we could we could do that, but that's not the case currently. Okay, and uh, this one last question here for integrations was: Will we see substance to RenderMan output for plugins for Houdini RenderMan or Maya RenderMan? 
and uh, yeah, for this one, I can say for for the Maya plugin, Substance in Maya, uh, we do have an automated uh, workflow for that. So once you have your Substance in, you just choose RenderMan from the menu, hit Create Shader Network, and it and it builds uh, your 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 shader based on PXR surface. And uh, I, I was uh, working with uh, Fabrice on the Substance Painter side, so I know that we're going to be including uh, RenderMan, PXR Surface, and uh, PXR Disney uh, for uh, you know, um, updating, basically, the export configurations for Painter. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know if you, or, or Davide, I don't know if you guys have any more comments on that RenderMan part. Nothing new. I mean, we did an, uh, some experiments doing live feeds, and that was uh, fun, but the, the Exporting to RenderMan is really about conforming to their uh, specific shader and uh, the semantics of their inputs, and that's that's uh, that's in Painter already. We don't have a live integration, as, as far as I can tell. Okay, guys, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm just kind of looking through the list here. Some of these are coming in, so uh, I'm going to try to kind of start to wrap up some of these questions. Uh, here, just a, a general: Will we be at Adobe Max this year? Absolutely. Yeah. So far, so far, yes. I mean, that's so far, yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, say, right? so, yeah, yeah, I know everything has changed, but I, I can say I know that Vanessa on the event side, she's she's already kind of booking artists for that. So I know that. Yeah. So, so, so far planned, but I guess we'll see what happens in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. A uh, few other things here, guys, if, if it's okay with you. Uh, any plans of making an Anorigami API? Uh, David, do you want to take that? I, I don't, we have so, uh, an API. And, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, we have it as an API and it's in, integrated in uh, currently in Painter and it may not be the only product we integrated in. Uh, whether we want to release it as an open API for people to use it, that is a product question. Maybe Sad can talk about it. But... I don't know that we have any, any, uh, any uh, plan or decision on that right now. But it, it's a, it's a possible. It's technically, it's it's doable. It just, I don't know if we if we want to do that or not at this point. Okay, is a designer going to ship with Material X, or will it be expected to, or will we be expected to maintain the installs? So, Davide, did you say that was going to be a plugin? So it is a plugin. It is uh, entirely Python based. Uh, as long as you have the Material X itself library. Um, that is currently available on Substance Share. I would like to have it uh, as open source, actually, uh, as a Git repo that we can, everybody can contribute on. Uh, we're not there yet, but I think we should get there soon. And um, yeah, I mean, once it's there, you, you know, add in an integration and downloading it. So it's an easy down, uh, it's an easy activation from, from designer, it will be easy. Okay, awesome. Uh, is is there a future where we could have point filtering for brushes in Substance Painter? Sorry, can you repeat this one, Wes? Oh, yeah, sorry, Jeremy. Is there a future where we could have point filtering, point filtering for brushes in Substance Painter? Uh, that doesn't seem like a very complicated task. Uh, if uh, if if we see if we see demand for it, we could we could definitely do it. Okay. There, there's awesome. no current plan, but uh, if I would advise, I would advise whoever post, posed, uh, asked the question to add that to our user voice, just so we have a, a trace of it and we can we can track it. Oh yeah, that's a that's a really good point, uh, Marine or Vincent. Uh, if you guys get a chance, if you could just you know post a link into the chat, we have our user voice where you can uh, uh, always post ideas such as this, and we're constantly looking at that. Uh, so this is another option. As we've heard this one, I think, quite a few times: a skew option or liquify option. Uh, similar to Mari, is, will, will we see something like that in Substance Painter? Uh, we're working on something. That's all I can say. Oh. Ooh, okay. <laughs> That's intriguing. Okay, nice. All right. Uh, hey, Kelly, this is Medium. Uh, are you guys planning on having retopology tools? What, can you repeat that? Sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, just uh, for Medium, are, are you guys planning on having retopology tools? Oh, um, yeah, so what we have uh, now is kind of a, a quick and dirty thing, but there's a lot of, as I keep saying, there's a lot of awesome benefits to being alongside the substance teams and being at Adobe, um, getting more re general resources and sharing tech. So I would say that 
you know, we might have some, we're still planning this stuff, but we have, we, we want to do UV work. We want to do a bunch of work actually with exporting. So um, I would say stay tuned on that. It's definitely something we talked about. Okay, cool. Uh, do, do we have any news about Material Viewer in Sketchfab? Not sure if I, if I understand that one. Can you repeat this one? Sorry. What? Yeah, it says uh, any, any uh, news about the Material Viewer in Sketchfab. I don't know if that's something we talked so, about before. So we, we used to, we used to use Sketchfab for a material viewer on Substance Source. Um, now we we use a custom uh, internal uh, engine for a viewer. Uh, you may have noticed that it's down right now. It's not it's not actually on a Substance Source uh, since the past few couple of weeks, and that's because we have to um, we have to update our our hosting for. Um, um, being part of Adobe. So uh, we're in the process of migrating our um, 3D viewer to um, a new servers. So we'll come back, it will come back up very soon. But currently we're using a custom solution for the viewer. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Uh, will Alchem excuse me, will Alchemist get post-processing and will Painter have an option to save lighting and post-process settings? Uh, so Alchemist will, will likely get post processing at some point. I, I can't say much more than that for now, but um, it, it is likely. Uh, uh, for Substance Painter to be able to save the post effects, I think they are saved in the project today. Um, I don't know if you can save them in general in the app. I think currently we save those post process in each SPP file. So if you, um, what you can do is you can create your own templates in Substance Painter, so when you uh, you select that template when you create a file, and that should have that should save your post processing. I think I'm not 100% sure. Uh, if it doesn't, it it it's something that we could add. Okay. Um, all right. So this one is, uh, you know, a Painter where you can press uh, the letter to view the channel, like C for color and so on. Uh, they're asking, will that ever come to Designer? Uh, that seems something that could fairly be add, fairly easily be added to designer so i would say why not i don't know if it's in the plans today but i don't see a reason why it wouldn't be yeah maybe nicholas is listening in the chat i did see him earlier so maybe maybe he maybe, maybe he can chime in, in the chat yeah 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 uh okay let's see here guys uh okay can we make the 3d view and 2d view uh in painter dockable like to have the 3d uh, in one monitor and the 2D in another. I guess, like, I guess, can you tear it off and move it to another monitor? Um, yeah, we, we don't have plans for it today, uh, but uh, we probably have a ticket somewhere for uh, like a task to do it. Uh, it's not high priority today, but it's something that we could do at some point. Okay, and uh, oh, I see Nicholas is in the chat. He did say no plans for the color switch exhibit, but that would be nice. So I know that he's taking a lot of notes for those kind right. of things. Perfect. Awesome, thank you, Nicholas. And I'm sorry, guys. There was one other question here that I, I forgot to ask. This one was: uh, Any plans to allow us to give nodes specific colors? Uh, I guess they're asking any nodes with exposed parameters. I can make them orange for organizational purposes. That that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm sure Nicholas.